black cat vireos are small, migratory songbirds that can be heard singing within dense, shrubby habitat. They quickly hop between branches and fly rapidly to shrub mods. Vireos are often more difficult to see than other songbirds due to their small size and constant movement. This pair chose a Carolina buckthorn to build their nest, and it appears that they are incubating eggs. Black-capped vireos were added to the list of endangered and threatened species in 1987 by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, when only 350 individuals were known to exist. Habitat loss and brown-headed cowbird parasitism were the primary threats to black-capped vireos. After years of extensive conservation efforts by state, federal, and private partners, the species was removed from this list in 2018 and there are now over 14,000 birds estimated across their breeding range of Oklahoma, Texas, and northern Mexico. Currently, scientists are monitoring black-capped vireos until 2030 to ensure the species continues to thrive without the special protection. This includes tracking black-capped vireo population trends and monitoring threats. My name is Sydney Dragon, and I am a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service intern at the Arlington Ecological Services Field Office in Texas. During the 2021 black-capped vireo breeding season, our office partnered with Scott Summers, U.S. Army Environmental Protection Specialist, to set up cameras on black-capped vireo nests at Fort Hood Military Base. Black-capped vireos are one of the smallest vireos and weigh between 9 and 10 grams. Males have a dark black head while the female's caps appear grayer. They have a yellow and olive body, white breast, and brownish red eyes. Black-capped vireos return to their wintering range in Mexico in August and September. In the non-breeding months of fall and winter, black-capped vireos live in the foothills of the Sierra Madre Occidental to the Pacific coast of Mexico. Little is known about the black-capped vireo migration, but it is believed to occur mostly at night. This male has a silver band on his right leg. Scientists ban birds by attaching a band, or tag, that has a unique number that signifies the bird's identity. Each band is fitted for a species so that it does not impede its life in any way. Banning birds is an important tool to monitor the status and trends of bird populations and for us to better understand migration. It also answers important questions such as, how long do birds live? How many birds are present at a research location? And how many birds were born each year? This pair built a nest in a shin oak shrub. The female laid four eggs and two nestlings hatched. Nests usually contain four eggs, but can range from one to five. The black-capped vireo parents share nesting duties, which includes incubation, feeding, and brooding. Brooding is when the parent sits on the nestlings to provide warmth to the chicks. The females do more of the nest work in incubating, so they have larger brood patches than the males. A brood patch is a featherless area on the underside of a bird that provides more heat than if it were covered in feathers. When the parents take turns during incubation, both adults vocalize to let the other know it's time to change over. The black-capped vireo nesting period is about 28 days long. After the nest is built, one egg is laid per day consecutively, and then the parents incubate the eggs for 14 to 19 days. The chicks hatch and are naked, blind, and completely dependent on their parents. The chicks open their eyes at about 5 days and have most of their feathers by day 10 after hatching. They are then ready to leave the nest on the 11th or 12th day. The parents continue to take care of the fledglings by feeding them and teaching them to forage. When they are 25 days old, the fledglings are independent enough to forage by themselves, but the parents will still look after them. The fledglings are not completely independent until 35 to 45 days old. Black cat vireos usually live 2 to 3 years, but an individual was documented with banding information that put it at 12 years old.
These parents are feeding, and they appear to be learning how to feed each nestling separately. Nestlings imprint on the parents, so it's important for both parents to reinforce feeding behaviors. This Carolina wren seems to be checking out the nestlings. Ornithologists speculate that other bird species will sometimes visit a nest just out of curiosity. Painted buntings, northern cardinals, and white-eyed vireos are often heard singing in the background of the video footage. This female painted bunting visited the nestlings and it looks like she has food in her beak. Black-capped vireos eat mostly insects, and the parents both bring food to the young. We noticed the parents often brought caterpillars, grubs, grasshopper nymphs, moths, and an occasional walking stick insect. The male black-capped vireo feeds the chick what seems to be an underwing moth. Birds with nests generally give off frequent alarm calls, move rapidly, and flick their wings and tail often. Females use a harsh call known as a shrad to attract her mate, to signal switches in incubation duty, and to ward off potential predators or lead them away from the nest. This is what a shrad sounds like. And this is what a black-capped vireo song sounds like. The males sing to defend a territory of about two to three acres of habitat area. During the spring and summer breeding season, the male black cat vireos arrive to Fort Hood Military Base in Texas first to scope out their territory around mid-March. Females arrive shortly after and males can then begin to attempt courtship. Males will pursue a female by flying after her, singing and displaying his wings. The couple will usually be together for the entire breeding season. Because the female has a larger brood patch and is the primary caretaker, the male will bring food to the female. Sometimes storms are so intense a nest is destroyed, but this nest made it through the storms. I'm Scott Summers, and I'm a Department of the Army Civilian Environmental Protection Specialist at the Fort Hood, Texas Natural Resources Branch. During 2021, I support the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in acquiring local information about black cap vireo habitat, nest monitoring, and cowbirds within Central Texas. Fort Hood is home to the largest known breeding population of black cap vireos due to its commitment to maintaining healthy shrublands with associated grass meadows. It is estimated that more than 6,000 breeding pairs nest here every year. Black cap vireo nests on Fort Hood have been most frequently found in Shin Oak, Texas Oak, Texas Ash, and Texas Redbud. Carolina Buckthorn, Juniper, Cedar Elm, and other shrub species hold occasional nests. Black cap vireo nests are always cup shaped and hang from the fork of a woody limb. Their nests are built two to four feet off the ground and constructed using spider webs, grass, dead leaves, and strips of flexible bark. The opening of the nest is about the diameter of a soda can. 
When parents tend young, nestlings excrete bodily waste in a white globule known as a fecal sac. When an adult vireo arrives at the nest, nestlings often defecate upward so that the parent can grasp the fecal sac and carry it away from the nest and keep it clean. Fire restores and maintains shrubland habitat in the eastern portion of the vireo's breeding range and prevents maturation of oak juniper woodlands into woodland and forested habitats that the vireo cannot use for nesting. Habitat maintenance and creation by prescribed burning is an effective management tool to set back plant succession and encroachment. In the black-capped vireo's breeding range, increases in the known population are attributed largely to cow burden habitat management and decreases in sheep and goat abundance. Goats can eat vegetation and foliage up to six feet high, which is detrimental to the vireo habitat. Portions of the vireo breeding range, brown-headed cowbirds are monitored to quantify their impact on the black-capped vireo populations. Brown-headed cowbirds are brood parasites because they do not build a nest and do not raise their own young. Instead, cowbirds lay their eggs in the other birds' nests and their large chicks easily outcompete smaller nestlings for food. The vireo is especially susceptible to cowbird parasitism and will often accept a cowbird egg raising it at the expense of its own young. Fort Hood, as well as many other conservation partners, continue to manage brown-headed cowbirds during the breeding season to reduce the effects of brood parasitism. These nests were found in areas where cowbird numbers have been managed so the nests were not parasitized, resulting in higher rates of vireo nest success. Currently, we plan to continue our partnership with Fort Hood and document the nesting success of this rare bird as it recovers. Thank you so much to everyone involved in this project.